I started by trying to write a book about how people build successful states. I was very interested in state building, and I was interested in the elements that we often overlook in state building. And so what happened was I started going into state archives and just looking at the elements um, that, that were there when people were building states, the intellectual interests, the players. And one of the things I found, uh, I found many accountants. And I thought, this is really interesting. I mean, here we are at these great moments in Tuscany, uh, uh, in, in the Quattrocento, in the Renaissance, and here we are in France, and here we are in Holland. And each time I found accountants, not just in sort of backup roles, but as these great leaders. And I was like, this is really fascinating. But as I was doing that, uh, the crisis in 2008 hit, and I sat and I watched uh, uh, the crisis unfold, and I watched uh, Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers collapse, and I watched the footage as the accountants moved in at night, only to discover, even though their offices were just across the street, uh, that all the CDOs and their, uh, uh, their, their bundles, their mortgage bundles, were worthless. And I said, this is it. We're going to have this amazing discussion about accounting. And I said, this is, we're going to talk about why it works, why it doesn't work. They're going to hold up the accounts, and we're going to discuss the accounts, because that's what happened in the 18th century. Uh, in Will's work, uh, in the bubble, it happened in uh, France later, before the revolution, and um, it never happened. And I thought, wow, that's really an interesting disconnect. I wonder if there's a story here. So what I started doing is I started not just looking at states that worked. I started actually looking for other moments where accounting failed. Uh, and it was a sort of uh, an odd trip. So what I did is I went to the archives of some major states and looked at the accountant's and the role of accounting. I went to the Medici, and I saw Cosimo's books, and they were amazing, and I saw how he and people around him used accounting remarkably. But then I also, as, as many business historians know, um, I found that later they fail at accounting. They drop it. This is actually the ledger in which um, uh, Francesco Sassetti stops balancing the books uh, 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 in the 1470s, uh, and essentially the Medici bank goes bankrupt. Um, and so I sort of kept digging. Um, and I went to Louis XIV, and it was the same thing. He became fascinated by accounting. He learned accounting. He had his minister, Colbert, um, create golden account books for more than 20 years that he kept in his pocket. But when uh, um, you know, his accounts went bad during the wars and the building of Versailles, he stopped it too. So this was a sort of amazing thing. At this point, I was looking, I just kept looking. I kept going to different countries and going to different archives and going to different traditions to see what I could find. And I ended up in Holland. Um, and what I found in Holland really struck me. Because when I went there to start looking for the history of accounting and doing some work in the archives, I also ended up going to museums and also remembering paintings that I had known. And I discovered that there was a huge accounting genre of paintings in, uh, in uh, uh, the, the Flemish Dutch tradition. This is an, an early painting, actually, of the Medici branch uh, uh, director, Tommaso <coughs> Portinari, who gives bad loans and keeps bad books. Um, he actually painted this before he, he had this painted. He paid for it to be painted before he actually went bust uh, in, in the Bruges uh, branch. But this was a sort of remarkable painting of a financier being judged and facing the final reckoning. And that's actually where I got the idea of the title for the book when I was looking at this painting. We know that Holland declines in the 18th century, and the Dutch will also tell you that, is that they start painting more of those paintings again. But at this point, they're all cheating each other, and no one trusts anybody. And the bookkeeping is not as good as it used to be. In fact, England emerges as the center of, of, of bookkeeping by the late... Uh, at the beginning of the 18th century, there are about 30 what are called writing schools, which are schools where you learn to write well, and you, you learn to write well to keep accounts, so you also learn double entry accounting. By the end of the 18th century, Britain has a thousand of these schools. This culture sort of expands out in Britain, and I don't want to go into a full sort of discourse on this, but it's, it also enters into their artistic tradition. They celebrate accounting. There are a huge number of pictures of British merchants smiling over their books. We have uh, many other writers of the 18th century writing about accounting. There are songs about accounting. There are poems about accounting. It is very much in people's mind. I'm leaping over 
years and years and years of, of, of accounting history and the history of accountability, but I do want to bring us up to the 20th century and our own issues. Um, still in the 1960s, um, Arthur and Young could show this brochure, the sort of madman brochure, right, of this is a good job, where this guy is clearly scoping out uh, the possibilities that his job offers him as an accountant, and there's a little bit of glamour involved in this. But with all the scandals that will follow accounting, um, and actually the loss of social prestige of accounting, when Arthur Anderson moves accounting to the Midwest and gets this theory that sort of Midwestern, middle-class people need to do accounting, it loses much of its cultural cachet. That's followed, as we know, by numerous <coughs> accounting scandals. And now accountants are out of view. We don't see them. We don't talk about them. The modern image of an accountant is kind of that. That's the stock photo of an accountant. It's not a great image, okay? Um, and in fact, accountants, there are others, I mean, there are other pictures of just, that are in the accounting schools of just accountants in the dark suits looking very, very sort of grim, looking down. But there's none of this great art surrounding accountants. There's none of this cultural uh, uh, awareness. That seems to me to be a huge problem. We don't talk about accountants. In fact, we feel uncomfortable talking about accountants. We have 800,000 accountants in the big four accounting firms. All of our lives, in one way or another, very quickly in one credit card transaction tonight, we'll go through one of those big four firms. Somehow through, at some point through well, a computer, but eventually through an accountant, and yet these people remain invisible. We had this massive crisis. No one talked about the accountants. The balance sheets weren't brought out in public and discussed the way they were in the 18th century. In many ways, we've gone backwards. And that has inspired this book, and that's why I wrote it. Thank you very much.